Dual cab utes are great at lots of things, and here in Australia, they're certainly very popular, with utes like this one topping our sales charts month in, month out. But does choosing a dual cab bring any sacrifices or compromises in an emergency situation compared with an SUV or a hatchback? Hang around, because I think the size of those compromises may surprise you. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe and dive into the comments below to let us know what you think. This exercise isn't about criticising dual cab utes. It's about awareness. Modern utes are hugely popular, and they also drive very well. But does their extra weight and height bring compromises in extreme scenarios that require you to change your driving habits? Or do modern tyres and electronics mean they're just as capable as conventional passenger cars? To test that logic, we've brought together a hatchback, an SUV and a dual cab from Ford and Mazda. And we're going to run them through a series of tests to record the differences in an emergency stop, a swerve and avoid and lateral G. First up, braking performance. Stopping distances when trying to avoid an emergency situation can mean the difference between a close call and disaster. And it's one of the key areas where an SUV and dual cab's extra weight, height and tyres can make an eye-opening difference. To ensure our data is as impartial and as accurate as possible, we engaged the VinFast engineering team to run the tests at its proving ground in Victoria. Two braking tests were performed, both from 100 k's an hour to zero, with one in the dry and the other on a consistently wet surface. For maximum accuracy, we completed four or five runs in each vehicle, and then deleted the best and worst results before averaging out the remaining figures. We also cooled the brakes between each stop to eliminate fade as a variable. And the results show that dual cabs do carry a compromise, especially in wet conditions. In the dry, both the hatchbacks and the SUVs stopped around the 40 metre mark, with the Escape SUV recording the best braking distance at 38.5 metres. By comparison, the Ford Ranger took 5.7 metres longer to stop than the Escape. That's more than a full car length. Or, to put it another way, by the time the Escape has come to a complete stop, the Ranger was still travelling at 35.9 kilometres an hour. That's fast enough to have serious consequences. And the gap only increases on a wet surface. This time, the Ford Focus Active was the strongest performer, with a stopping distance of 47.4 metres. But the Ford Escape was only 40 centimetres worse off. The Mazda 3 hatchback could only manage 50.8 metres in the wet test, although that's still 7 metres better than the Ford Ranger. Comparing the Ranger's 57.8 metre wet stopping distance with the Ford Focus Active's 47.4 increases that gap to more than 10 metres. That's more than two full car lengths. The Moose Test is one of the most difficult activities for any vehicle and it replicates a swerve and recover situation or a double lane change. We followed the official ISO 3888 testing designation and we ran each vehicle through the exercise at increasing speeds until cones were hit. Put simply, the higher the entry speed, the more capable the vehicle is. Both hatchbacks were standouts in this test, with the Mazda 3 and the Ford Focus recording an entry speed of 78 and 79 kilometres an hour, respectively. But it was the Mazda that was easier to control, with the Ford needing more input from the driver to control its less stable lateral movements. The SUVs were also fairly closely matched, but the Moose test proved a stern challenge for the dual cabs. The Ranger managed 69 kilometres an hour, while the BT50's entry speed was 68. The VinFast team's testing notes state that the dual cabs felt more cumbersome and were more difficult to control. The driver also had to turn in earlier to allow enough time for the ute to respond. To assess each vehicle's maximum lateral grip, an inertial and GPS measurement system was rigidly installed at the car's centre point and then corrected for roll angle. The course was a ring of cones 60 metres in diameter on a concrete skid pad. Speed was gradually increased until the stability control intervened or the vehicle wasn't able to maintain the circular course. All the runs were completed with the stability control activated 
but the dual cabs also had it disengaged due to their very early intervention. Each vehicle was tested over two runs in each direction for a total of four runs. The Mazda 3 excelled in this test and recorded a max G of 0.83 before it washed wide. The Focus Active was even stronger, despite its raised ride height, recording 0.87 G, which was helped by its slightly grippier Goodyear tyres. The Ford Escape SUV was again a very strong performer and it split the two hatchbacks. The two dual cabs recorded very similar results to one another, but the testing team's notes describe them as having greater roll, reduced steering response and conservative electronic calibrations. Repeating the test without stability control made little difference in the Ford Ranger due to its rollover mitigation system, but the BT50's Max-G lifted to 0.74. Our final exercise was designed to see if there are any differences in how autonomous emergency braking systems work on a hatchback, an SUV and a dual cab. We fitted each car with a GPS speed sensor and an impact trigger on the front bumper before driving towards a soft target on a constant throttle starting at 5 km an hour. We then increased the speed in 5 k an hour increments. The good news is that all the vehicles avoided the soft target up to 50 k an hour, which is the speed used by NCAP to evaluate AEB. However, there was a notable difference in the systems between Mazda and Ford. Mazda's AEB system worked well at speeds beyond 50 k's an hour and applied the brakes firmly as late as possible to avoid a collision. Ford's system won't save your inattentiveness above 50 k's an hour, but below that it does warn the driver earlier with a noticeable braking pulse to give the driver a chance to avoid the collision before the system makes a full AEB stop. It means Ford's stopping distances from the target are smaller than the Mazda's, but in a real-world situation, it does give the driver an earlier opportunity to intervene. In many respects, the data gathered by the VinFast team held few surprises. In terms of a general trend, the hatchbacks performed the best, followed by the SUVs and then the dual cabs. But what's interesting is the size of those differences. A key takeaway is that the Ford Escape's impressive showing is proof that modern SUVs aren't necessarily dynamically inferior to regular hatchbacks. And it's also clear that while dual cabs have come a long way in terms of performance, dynamics and passive and active safety, they are still compromised as on-road vehicles. So what's the key takeaway? Are we saying don't buy a dual cab ute? Absolutely not. We love them and we understand their multi-talented appeal. What we are saying though is if you own a dual cab ute, maybe give yourself a bit more room in traffic.